I got a little project today. Um, this is the back gear that originally came with my lathe. As you can see, off the small end, I got two teeth out of that chipped right out of it. Um, I did source a replacement online. Uh, the only reason why I did that instead of actually repairing this was because the the one online that I found was uh, it only ended up costing me thirty bucks. And uh, unfortunately, when I got it, it wasn't a huge issue. But I don't know if there's a huge difference in the years on these or what, but or if people just label them incorrectly, coming off of either a 415 or a 405 or whatever kind of lay they got. But the actual length of the one that I got was about a sixteenth of an inch shorter than this one, so it was floating around on the back air shaft. All I had to do was add a little shim on the end, and I took care of it, but just something to watch out on. So, um, we're going to repair this one today. The way I'm going to do that is I am going to basically fill this gap here with braise up until it meets the top of the other gears here. And then I'm going to file it to shape with a triangle file. Now, there are a million things out there that you can use to weld or braise. The easiest thing or the thing that you're going to see most in any kind of do-it-yourself hardware store, in which I use at work for copper and soft soldering, is going to be these little handheld automatic start torches that you can either use propane or map gas. Now, map gas burns hotter than propane. If this is the only thing you have access to, um, it make sure you get a map gas tank with it. These will work, but I you're probably going to have to have two of them um, and set up some sort of stand to be able to point them at the same spot because it will take a while to heat up the metal, but it it, it will work. I, I've done it at work before with two, um, you, with up to about an inch and a half copper being able to braise it with two torches. Now there's these auto stock versions here and there are also these, if I can untangle the cord here, these other versions, which is just a little handheld torch, and you got your little regulator adjustment on this. These ones actually do tend to burn a little hotter than the other ones do. Um, the only downside is you're going to need either a lighter or, you know, some sort of spark ignition for it. No big deal, though. What I'm going to be using is going to be my acetylene torch. All it is is just acetylene, no oxygen. Um, and this is run off of a B tank, which is just the size, which I'll show you down here. That's a B tank. I use it all the time at work. Um, it's a medium sized tank. They do make a smaller one called an M tank, which is um, probably about the size of two of those map gas tanks combined. Um, but these these ones, at least for what I do at work, these these do uh, pretty good. So the, uh, these torches here are have interchangeable heads. In other words, it's got a quick release collar and you can get different sizes of tips. This one here happens to be a number 11 um, which is the most common size I do use at work. They, you do use bigger ones Bigger ones will put out a lot more heat. The only issue is you're not going to be able to localize the heat to where you want it. You might spread it where you don't. I, I, I like this size for, for general purpose work. And even at work, I'm able to um, braise copper down as small as a quarter inch and not melt through it. So this gives me really, really good control over it. Um, just a quick note about when you do use these. On that tank over there, there is a regulator. The regulator you always want to have on um, as, as far as it can go. Same thing with this little knob here. You crank it as far as it to go. Because what, what you don't want to do, if you try to throttle it, your flame, the actual pressure in gas mixture in here, actually pushes the flame out of the tip. So what will happen is it will be very, very close to this, to this edge here, and you will actually see this edge start to glow and heat up red hot. So you want it cranked all the time. Now as far as being able to braise cask iron, there are a couple different things that you can use. Um, these I just picked up at a hardware store. It says it's good for cast iron. Um, just little 
welding rods general it says general purpose on it uh, the alloy in these is bronze they are just like a white stick that white on the outside is the flux flux is what um, protects the joint and doesn't allow it to oxidize and allows the actual material inside to flow uh, I don't particularly know how well these work I, I, I believe I've used this actually on been able to spot braze um, stainless steel before but it wasn't wasn't anything um, huge and it wasn't anything really that I cared about I just needed to join two pieces real quick for a um, for just just a plate to cover something so I wasn't really concerned about quality or strength so um, but th this is an option what I'm gonna use the only reason why I'm gonna use this because I have it and use it at work is uh, this mess of wire here and you can see how often I use this um, this is called silver solder or silver braze um, basically it's 45 percent silver and uh, other couple of other metals I'm not exactly sure what they are um, I use it at work when I do uh, steel to copper or steel to steel brazing for compressors and refrigeration units um, as you can tell by this here I, I don't use it very much but you know, it comes in handy when you need it. The only problem is this one is not flux covered, so you're going to need a flux. And what you're going to need is a, I don't know if you can see that through the light, uh, a silver brazing flux. Uh, what this is, is instead of the, uh, the resin ones for soft solder and plumbing and stuff, this is going to be a paste, a white paste. This paste can be mixed with water to thin it, um, but you basically want it to stay where you put it, so you need it relatively thick and pasty. Um, now to prep the cast iron, all I did was take a little file that fit into there and filed all the crud off of that. Now cast iron when it breaks doesn't break clean you can see the pits in it so unlike steel or something like that that's gonna gonna crack or, or, or kind of tear you're gonna get little little pits and such in here that you're gonna want to fill now what I did like I said oh, the, the best way to clean cast iron is with the file knock down the high points get everything even you're not gonna be able to get into those pits but that's not a huge deal and then wire brush it with a stainless steel wire wheel you do not want to use any kind of grinder whether it be a handheld die grinder or dremel tool or a bench grinder so what happens is that carbon dust actually impregnates into here and you'll never be able to get the braze to stick to it the other thing about cast iron is even though iron is in the name it's very very brittle so you're gonna want to preheat the part in other words you don't want to just go at this with the torch until this glows bright red and then do your brazing. You want to heat up the whole pot first to a relatively, I mean, it doesn't have to be, the, the whole thing doesn't have to be glowing red hot, but like, you know, say four or 500 degrees. Get it, get, get, get the whole pot um, nice, nice and hot. Because what'll happen is if you just put the torch here and go at it, you'll get stress cracks in this and it'll weaken it. Um, the other thing you don't want to do, unlike you can do with steel and some other metals, is you don't want to quench it. You don't want to finish this up, drop it in a bucket of cold water. Cold water rather. All you hear is a big crack and you're screwed. Um, actually, when I, when I used to do uh, furnace change outs, especially the steam boilers, they're taller than I am. We could never get them out of the building. What we used to do was knock them down, heat them up with an oxyacetylene torch, throw cold water on them, and crack them with a hammer into pieces. So it's very, very important that you heat the pot relatively evenly. Also, like I said, you don't want to quench it, but if it's really, really cold out, or if it's cold where you're doing this, you want this to cool down as slow as possible. So a good way of doing it is, well, the best way of doing it is to put it in a bucket with lime. Line the bottom with lime, put the part in there, cover the part completely to the top with lime. Unfortunately, I'm not in the mafia, and I'm not a gardener, so I don't have lime lying around. What you can use is clean sand. It does the same thing. And what that does is slow the cooling process. 
down on the pot. It'll cool evenly and it'll cool slow. It may take even as much as a day or two to cool completely off. Um, down where I'm doing this right now, down in my cellar, it's because of my furnace and stuff, it's probably in the low to mid 70s in here. So I'm just gonna let air cool. So um, let me set up the camera on the part here. And all this is, is just a couple of bricks just to make a little bit of a firebox to kind of contain my heat and make sure I don't kill my stainless steel table. Um, and what I'm gonna do is before I even start, I'm, I'm not gonna show you guys the preheating or anything. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take my torch, light it up, and slowly go back and forth over the pot, heat it up evenly. Once that's done, we'll get the camera set back up again and uh, hopefully we can see some braze happening. Okay, I got my pot all preheated, as you can see by the smoke coming off of it. Now I'm going to use the silver solder, silver braze, to do this. I'm going to put my flux on. You'll see the flux, um, when it melts, it'll start to get liquidy. It'll be chunky and turn black until you get the pot glowing red, then it'll start to melt. That's when you want to apply your rod. Now this stuff, the hotter it gets, the faster this is going to flow. Basically what I want to do is heat it up really, really hot first and put a layer in there right on these, right, right in the space that I want. Then I want to let it cool down so that this doesn't flow as much and build that layer up. So um, hopefully you'll be able to hear me over the torch. Um, if not, I'll have to add t subtitles or something. So you put some flux on here. That hiss is just the water boiling off of my flux. You can see it gets chunky and powdery. As I heat it up, that's going to turn into liquid. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit better. Okay. Lay your torch right in there. You know you can't tell on the on the camera, but right about here is bright blue. You want that bright blue pot touching your cast iron. Okay, my swatch is starting to melt. I know you can't see it through the flame, but it is. My pot's starting to change color now. It's a very, very dull red. You want to heat it up so it looks like a, about the, the color of a cooked carrot. That said, with a bigger torch, this will take a lot less time, but you have a chance of overheating the rest of the gears. Okay, we get a little more heat in the pot. Color's changing a little bit redder. See that red color, that cherry red color? All you want to just touch your braze in there and see it start to melt. Lay it right in. I just have to turn the pot vertically. So that way there it fills the hole.
there you go. Be sure to turn your smoke detectors off. All right, we got it all braised up. It's still slightly too hot to, I mean, I can touch it, but it, if I were to hold this and uh, try to shape it, it would burn me. So I'm gonna let it cool down for a little while. We've got the smoke detectors to shut off. Um, and this is pretty much what it's what it looks like right now. Block the light from my window here. Uh, hang on. Now you can see at the very end, it's rounded over and not completely to the end of these gears. There's no way you're going to be able to get a perfectly sharp corner on it, but it should be good enough to be able to turn. Um, but it is filled to the top of each gear here. Um, and uh, let me let this cool down a little bit longer, and then we'll go over some filing and see what we come up with after that. Okay, back from filing. Um, I don't want to bore you with the sitting there and shaping everything, but here's what we came up with. Right here is where that braze joint was. Um, you're going to get a little bit, or at least on this, I got a little bit of pitting right here, but it's not in the base, it's on the top. That's from oxidization building up when I brazed it, um, probably because between heating it up with the torch and uh, putting the flux on, I should have gone over it with uh, a wire wheel real quick, but I didn't, so that's what that's from. Um, but even when you're done, if you put a little bit of JB Weld on there and file that to shape too, if you have any little crevices, that'll fill it in, and it'll also give you a little bit of a wear surface for you to run on, because this braze is actually going to be hotter than the original cast iron. If you can see, pretty good on shape here. I'm just slightly flat on that. That was because I slipped with the file. Um, but you know, if you take your time and go through it and have patience, you can get a pretty good back gear out of it. So let me take my old one off and uh, throw this on there and see how it runs. Just so you can get an idea, this is the not the bowl gear that I, I mean uh, back gear that I fixed. This is the newer one that I bought that has no chips in it. Just so you can get an idea of what it sounds like with the not broken one on there. Pretty quiet. Um, you know, that's on a slow speed, obviously. Switch it a little higher and you can see how loud it gets so you can compare. That's about as loud as it gets in back here. Um, so we'll see how the other one compares to that. Alright, I have the repaired back air in place. Right here is our repair. See how loud this gets. Um, I'm going to take a quick test cut in aluminum. You know aluminum really isn't the best thing to uh, be cutting in back here, but it's just what I had on hand. This way here you can see that it does work under load. So let's keep the blade on. Now that has no lubrication on that side of the gear. If I put a little bit on there, it might quiet it down some. the load. That little click that you're coming around, that's right where that repair is. Um, you can probably get that out of there just by adjusting it a little bit, but it is working. It's not slipping. Like I said, that's as fast as speed, and that's a pretty decent feed rate. Uh, let me shut this off. Now I got it on the slowest speed now, and you can barely hear it coming around. Um, put a little bit of a load on it. Like I said, that click, a little more fine-tuning with the teeth, and I can, you can probably get that right out of it. But 
it is working it is a quick repair um, the best thing I can suggest though is that you practice before you attempt it on your actual back gear what you can do is go down to the hardware store grab two pieces of black iron like a, a one inch nipple and a three quarter nipple or a three quarter and a half inch and uh, just make them fit inside each other and braise the joint that way there you get the feeling of how of how clean you need to get it also heat and the way the, the, the solder or braise is going to flow um, that braise that I used like I said is not flux coated they do make flux coated silver um, from my supplier at least it was expensive it was more expensive than a new back gear that's why I didn't use it I wanted to show you with uh, what I had also those other little bronze rods will probably work for you too uh, you know probably be a little bit easier to shape the biggest thing is just clean it make sure everything is nice and clean uh, wire brush the living crap out of it file it do not use a die grinder do not use any sort of grinder also after you're done heating it up which is which was my mistake which I didn't do is wire brush the joint again because you do introduce some oxidization into those little pits especially um, if there's any kind of residual oil in the cast iron itself so that's why I had a couple of those little pit holes but those those little pits weren't down to the base metal so they they are strong enough to hold the load um, and that's basically a down and dirty repair for a back gear so um, hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you on the next one